Good morning, everybody. Vicki Verley here, up at the crack of dawn again to do the reading so we can have some quiet time. Well, it's a new moon in Cancer. At 2 degrees, 47 minutes Cancer. It's happening on June 23rd. 10.30 p.m. Eastern, times will vary. And it's a new moon in Cancer. So this is uh, also, the, I'm recording this on the morning of the solstice, the morning after the solstice, too. So it's very close to the solstice. It's at 2 degrees. So uh, I, I meant to run the solstice chart, too, but I, I just didn't get to it. But before I ever did YouTube, I never ran these monthly moon charts and stuff, but I always did run the solstice chart. I always run the solstice chart and I always looked at it in relationship to my chart and it's kind of because it's a new season you know and, and it's the change of the seasons it's a change of the energy it's a shift in the energy the cardinal ingresses um, when we change seasons and of course cancer is the is one of those it's a solstice point um, so it's real close it's a couple days off here it's um, two degrees here so it's a low degree of Cancer. So it's a, a new beginning. Um, the Cancer energy is about the mother, the home, the family, feeling nurtured, fed, taken care of. Um, it's water, so it's uh, receptive, perceptive, intuitive. So this is the focus of the energy. And of course it's Sun, uh, Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Mars are all here and Mercury is really in the stellium there. So you know it's uh, what I was doing. I was I've been cooking. I cook a bunch of stuff, especially in the summer here when it's hot. You know I cook big stuff instead of the complicated recipes. Instead of trying to make it for you know smaller portions, I just cook a bunch of it <laughs> and freeze them. You know I have a bunch of stuff that I make big vats of and freeze and. I've been doing that, you know, and then especially in the summer that it's too hot to cook, you just pull it out of the freezer, and warm it up, bang, fresh, you know, homemade food, but um, not having to go through this extreme, you know, ex extreme stuff there. So cooking, food, nurturing yourself, nurturing um, your, if you have children, fifth house is more children, but if you're a mother yourself, this is, this, it could be, it's nurturing yourself, really, and, um, you know, taking some time to do a little pampering for yourself, you know, those kind of things, take care of yourself, uh, not always doing for others, that's the extreme, cancer is doing for others in a lot of cases, you know, because in the old paradigm, this is the father and this is the mother, father's out in the world, earning a living, having a career, and the mother's home, taking care of the babies, doing the housework, that kind of stuff. Mercury, if your parents are living, call your mom. Call your mom. Call your mother. <laughs> also, it's uh, Father's Day just passed here in the U.S. I don't know if it's celebrated worldwide or not. Uh, so it's this connecting with family, connecting with uh, the, those who raised you, those who brought you up, those who nurtured you. Um, it's connecting with our lineage in a lot of ways. It is. Um, it's, a, it's how we were brought up, how we, how we were nurtured as a child. Healing, it's healing. Cancer, is the, the, cancer and Virgo are the big healers, I feel. You know, healing energy uh, in the zodiac. And the cancer energy is more from just a... The cancer is like the empress in the tarot. You know, it's like this goddess, mother, healing. And it's, it, it's uh, ultimately like kind of within. You know, it's a spiritual inner healing. It's it's a feeling good within yourself. It's loving yourself at its best. Um, cancer is the rules of moon over here. We can see that, and that's why it's uh, it could be the negative side is this the moodiness and crabbiness. You know, there's a cranky moodiness, and the energy is it changes. It's fluid because the moon changes sign every couple of days. <clears throat> So that's how, you know, cancer <clears throat> energy, excuse me, I need to drink water. <clears throat> cancer energy will change and flow. You know, it's moody, it changed, it's ever-changing. It's not, um, and the moon itself um, doesn't stay the same from our perspective. You know, there's a crescent moon and the full moon, new moon. It looks different. It looks different all the time. It feels different all the time. So it's ever-changing, it's ever-shifting. 
Um, it can get, uh, the Cancer energy can really give you a lot of perspective about your life, how you were raised, um, healing those wounds of childhood and, and how you were raised and things like that. Let's see, it's not looks like it's kind of unaspected according to the Aspectarium, but they don't take into account the uh, asteroids. Uh, it is. It looks like it's kind of unaspected other than the conjunction to the Mercury here. Looks like it's pretty much sitting there by itself. Uh, what, what do they have it squaring yet? Yeah, I guess it is going to square the Chiron. I think it's the Chiron's almost it's here. So it's squaring the Chiron. Yeah, but the thing that I noticed when I opened this chart is that the uh, first thing that caught my eye was that Vesto was in line with um, the note strengthening this, even though this is water, water everywhere, strengthening this fire grand trine. And note that each of the principal things in the, in the fire grand trine, which is the North Node, Saturn, and Uranus, these are the, print, I would call it the principal, the stronghold in the fire grand trying. Each has these feminine energies sneaking up on them. It's just, I feel like they're kind of sneaking up while the palace has passed, but it's kind of like um, they've got this feminine icons by their side, and then we have the new moon and cancer. There's definitely something about the feminine here, about um, bringing in the feminine energy, you know. Vesta is a feminine icon. Lilith is coming up on Saturn. Uh, Pallas, Athena is with Uranus. Uh, you know, Pallas, Athena, and Aries, Uran which is the sign they're in, Aries, not really Uranus, but the sign of Aries, there's a kinship there. Because um, Aries is the god of war, and uh, Pallas, Athena was like the warrior goddess. So there's kind of like this kinship there. So there's that expression of the feminine energy. You know, the warrior goddess feminine. I just I saw Wonder Woman. What a great movie. I love that movie. So it's just like Wonder Woman over here. Or, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Vesta is, um, you know, the Vestal Virgins. It's the home of the hearth. And then there's Lilith, you know. And uh, Lilith is coming up with Saturn here. This is going to be interesting. You know, Lilith is the independent woman. Lilith is the, can be vengeful. Lilith is very strong and independent. It's not going to be told what to do. And Saturn, um, wasn't uh, Lilith the first wife of Saturn? Was it first wife of Saturn or first wife of Adam, maybe, in mythology? Um, but she was too strong. She, she was, uh, I'm hearing that song, uh, Sheryl Crow, Are You Strong Enough to Be My Man? You know, that's what this feels like. That's what Lilith is saying to Saturn here. Are you strong enough to be my man? <laughs> uh, so this is going to be an interesting thing, because both of these are kind of like, um, you know, pretty much. Neither, ne neither is going to be told what to do. Neither is going to be pushed around, or neither is going to, both are very, can be very stubborn, and want, both want to be the boss. That's very strong. You know, this feels like the, the energy vibes nicely together, this feels like the energy vibes nicely together, and then we go, what? <laughs> Here comes Saturn and Lilith, look out, everybody. So this is, um, this is going to, um, can be clashing. It's almost as if these other feminine energies and then the feminine energy of the uh, Cancerian energy, it's all setting up to help this, help this along, help this be a smoother uh, interaction or a smoother... Um, yeah, I'm seeing like they're being forced to dance with each other. That's what it looks like. That's what Spirit's showing me. Like, uh, where, where they, these are these like two enemies or something, or two stubborn people with their arms crossed, like no way, no way, I'm talking to them, I'm dealing, with they're an asshole, and then these uh, these guys over here, and all the rest of them are, it's like I'm at a dance floor, like a, in a gymnasium or something, and there's like all these, these are all these people, and they're like pushing together, like come on now, you know you're gonna dance, come on, come on, and, we're, and they're and they're like bolstering or pushing it pushing it together, the joining of this thing. So they're reluctantly, they're very reluctantly kind of coming together and kind of, okay, you know, when really maybe they were a great match all along, or maybe they were a formidable team all along. And that would be true, I think, of the masculine and the feminine, you know. 
it's uh, it's not all about I have to have all the fo power, a sharing of power, a sharing of um, resources, power, um, leadership, all these sort of things could be coming together. You know, the other part of this is you know, the op there's oppositions to this Pluto energy, but Juno is in there with Pluto too. So these uh, these powerful powerful Leo's the king, you know, and Pluto is, you know, is the guy of the underworld, and, you know, Uranus. These powerful um, icons, I always want to call them icons, I don't know why I can't get that word in my head, I always go to icons, but these powerful symbols, these powerful representations of dominance and power, and, you know, they're all being, they feel like they're just being snuck up on <laughs> Or the feminine is whispering in their ear. Maybe that's... Cause doesn't it look like she's got her mouth... This is a mouth open? Lilith might be yelling right now. <laughs> she might be yelling or ready to take a bite out of him or something. <laughs> I'm going to blow that up so you can really see what I'm talking about. Because it, it, it's almost like... Uh, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Lilith, the symbol of Lilith. This is like a big mouth. Ah, Pac-Man. Ah, my, my, my. <laughs> Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> Here comes you know, Miss Pac-Man to, uh, oops, well, oh, darn it, sorry about that. I was trying to get it to the right size, but I realize it's, it is in a blown up state. But anyways, you know, so Lilith's kind of coming along like chomp, chomp, chomp. But um, everybody else is here to kind of smooth it out. Everybody else is here to kind of facilitate this union. I just heard this divine union, you know, this divine union of the male and the feminine energy. Um, so this opposition to Pluto, it's Mars opposed Pluto, oh, that's pretty intense. That's coming up. That'll be coming up kind of soon. So there's that. <laughs> there's that to contend with. I mean, that's war. I mean, that's war, that's clashing, that's explosive. You know, that's, let's not sugarcoat it too much here. That can really be, um, you know, it's forceful. Well, it's here's what we're I think here's what we're looking at. I think that I feel like that we're dealing with um opposition. We're dealing with the feminine versus the masculine, the dominant versus the what has been the subservient. And uh there's a rise it's rising up. The subservient is rising up and you know, we're as we move into the age of Aquarian, there there should be no dominant and subservient. You know, there should be none of that. And with the South Node in Aquarius, you know, we need to be looking at that. We need to be looking at um, the our humanity. You know, as as a human, as as a humanity as a whole, not as uh, oppressor and oppressee, or you know, the dominant and the um, subservient so that's you know and that's tip that's what it's been you know um, that's the hierarchy of power or distribution of wealth or whatever you want to call it that's what it's been for a long time and there, it, it's like well I if I have to dominate over you or or somehow if I were to embrace you as an equal or bring you into, uh, allow you a sharing of power that, that would diminish me in some way. But really, it would really strengthen you. Uh, it would strengthen the um, dominant, you know, because it's more, there's more in the genetic pool, not, not genetic pool, but that is it, the genetic pool, you know. Um, just like when inbreeding of dogs is coming to mind, where, you know, the, eventually this you have to bring in this it strengthens the breed it strengthens humanity it strengthens the pool not necessarily it's not even about genetics or race but it's just um it's just a metaphor for different opinions different out different outlooks different backgrounds different upbringings different you know roots and things like that i had this came to me after one of the readings when i was talking about how you know I was saying empowerment, and I was talking about the white male, and again, I love white males, and I'm not a man-hater and anything like that. But that's just been typically the power for a long time here. You're, with back to the node thing, so there's Uranus and Aquarius, we've got, a, you know, all of humanity. And how I was saying at that, that reading I was talking about, 
yeah, you know, if, even if we allow somebody else to take the reins for a while, take the power, other white males will take the power again too. You know, there'll be white males who are ruler again. You know, I think there's this fear, and it's not all white males either, because there's plenty of white males who are really cool and are really embracing and really real get this and realize it. It's it's a lot of these old school people. It's old paradigm. You know, it's a lot of these old school. But it's not necessarily old in age, you know. It's not necessarily because um, there's some younger people that I was quite shocked with uh, their their views. I was like, wow, really? Here I thought you were an artist and you were really open, and you know, that was really shocking. But then I, I realized that it really does come from a place of fear. Like I, I'm I'm losing. I didn't get my chance at the top. But wait a minute. Wait a hold. Whoa! Slow down here, everybody. I'm a you know I haven't got my chance at power. Well, in an Aquarian type of society, everybody has a chance at power. Everybody has. Everybody can be boistered. This is the point I was trying to get to. This is what I um, thought of after that one reading. Because this is like Leo is the one we lift on our shoulders. You know, Leo's the queen, the king, the ruler. I, I, I visualize it like we here the hero. You know, you can be the hero. We lift you up on our shoulders, and we, we shine a light on you, from the masses, from the big crowds of everybody. There's one who we put up there for a time. And then there's another, we pull somebody else from the crowd and they go up there from the time. So in, in an Aquarian society, it would be the best person for the job, whatever the job might be. It doesn't have to be political, it could be the whatever. And it doesn't have to always be only from this group of people, from only, you know, and, and by dominance. You know, by try to enforce dominance, we're suppressing so much, you know, um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a female in this incarnation. I'm saying that because we're suppressing who knows what. Who knows what great idea or message that we could be suppressing by limiting ourselves to only our little buddies or our insider people. You know, only the, only the people from my group who I deem to be one of my the superiors like me, you know, who thinks things, sees things my way, you know. There was something else about this Leo. I don't, I don't want to lose it. Let me try to get back here for a second. What was I talking about? The Leo rising up and putting the, the hero on her shoulder. Mm, well, there was something really good that I wanted to touch on that came. Oh, darn it. I hate when that happens. Well, maybe it'll come to me or it'll come. Well, the notes are going to be in here for a while, so maybe I'll come back in another another reading. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Venus is in Taurus. I, I just love this energy, and it's trining Pluto. You know, so there could be, this is a nice grounding of um, the Pluto energy. And Venus in Taurus is its natural placement. Venus rules um, Taurus. So it's, it's, it's expressing, you know, I don't know, I don't know the term. It's not exalted. It's one of those things. But it expresses itself naturally in its own sign there, you know, it's, it feels natural, it feels right, it's very grounding, it's very much in harmo harmony, you know, sextiling the Mars, so there's a place to ground it, there's a place to, uh, in love, grounded in love, you know, I just looked at, this is 18, I just looked at the clock and that we're at 18 minutes into the reading, and this is 18, and Pluto's 18, um, Vesta's at uh, 19 squaring, but that's just something was magical about that for a minute there. But anyways, so the way to, with Pluto plus Mars, although probably when it gets exact, it's not going to be quite there. This will probably be higher degrees, but for this, as if you're feeling this mounting, and, you know, it's, it's, it's an expression of Venus energy, which is also a feminine expression, you know. And feminine is... When I'm talking about masculine and feminine, it's not about men and f and women is our gender. You know, it, it's talking about I'm talking about this, the expression of the energy, and it, it's the expression the expression of this vibration. And it's it's not necessarily it really has not not that much to do with gender. You know because gender just really runs the spectrum anymore, and that's also the age of Aquarius. Uh, we've got these 29s. We've got 29 um, palaces at 29. Uh, Chiron is at 29. 
and those are at these high degrees. So we've got these higher degrees. So we're hopefully evolving, hopefully completing, hopefully learned something, you know, at the ends of these cycles, um, we should have learned these lessons, you know, we should have, and, you know, one of the lessons of Pisces is compassion. It's one of the lessons of Pisces. The other, another lesson of Pisces is not to be so attached to, um, all this stuff because it's simply an illusion, you know. Just remember that it's a grand illusion, and deep inside we're all the same. We're all the same. Yeah, so, the, oh, I just got chills on that one. But it's really, a, it's just an illusion. It's a dream. We're having a dream. This incarnation's a dream. And um, it's energetic. It's vibrational. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um... It's fleeting. Power is fleeting. Whether you believe this incarnation is a dream or not, you know, it's all fleeting. You're going to die anyway. You can't take it with you, as they said, you know, as they say. So, um, you know, just fighting over power. That's a lot of this Mars energy. And um, I feel that this is kind of this energy, although it's not really expressing in the planetary, but that's the vibe I'm getting from it. That this is this like you know because Saturn's on top there. It's like yeah, we're gonna come with me, you guys. We're gonna rule the world. We're gonna be dominant. We're gonna rule the world. <clears throat> and then there's these feminine energies that are standing right by their side, you know. And um, the, you know, in the old paradigm, you could look at it as you know the woman behind the man or something like that. Um, it's softer. It's not so outward expression. It's more inward, like the Cancer Moon in this energy of Cancer. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Running out of water. I might have a, a cough drop nearby. Let me see if I do. Uh, otherwise, we might have to wrap this up. Um. Anyways, it's it's inward. You know, it's this it's this inward expression. It's this inward vibration. It's, it's, it's a softness. You know, it's Mother Earth, you know, even though it's in that Earth sign. I'm going to put a cough drop. Hopefully you won't hear me sucking on it. It's not going to just be distracting, <laughs> but I think it's going to help me <clears throat> get this frog out of my throat. Anyways, but it's Mother Earth. It's... Um, you know, it's the waters and the streams, and um, it's the beach, you know. Where where is Cancer the Crab? Where does Cancer the Crab reside? It resides on the beach. It's of land and water, of earth and water. So it's, it's quiet. It's peaceful. It's also a time between. It's a transition, just as the... Um, Cardinal ingresses, these are transitional times as we, the solstice, meaning the solstice, when the changing of season. It's a transition from one energy to another. And the shores and the beaches are transitional places, that's why they're so magical. Because they're two, it's the crossing, it's the meeting of two worlds, the water and the, and the earth. And the energy of Cancer can go, uh, you know, is equally at home in both. It's a transitional, the creature itself, the cancer, the crab, is at home in two worlds. So it's not all about earth and money and possessions and it's mine, and but it's also not all about water and spirit and ethereal and emotional. You know, the sign of cancer is both. And even though they're soft and they're water, they have a hard shell. The Cancer energy has a hard shell. They're tough. They're a lot tougher than they look, you know. Um, and they, they can they can do some damage. They got those claws, and they can bite you. They can bite back, you know. And this energy with the Mars Pluto, that could be some biting back, you know. That could definitely be a thing. But it really doesn't have to be. The other... Uh, the other thing about this, this grand trine of fire is there's this action-oriented, it's solution-oriented, it's we're going to make things happen. It's not just sitting around dreaming, it's it's the lighting the fire, making it happen, 
uh, Uranus, you know, establishing new... Uranus rules Aquarius, so that's why I, when I go to Uranus, I refer, refer to the age of Aquarius. Um, this south node in Aquarius is key to, to our, our mistakes, you know, reviewing our mistakes as a humanity, as a collective. Um, what, what has kept us from becoming uh, united as humans, as humanity? What has kept us from that? What, it, what, what keeps us apart? You know what, what, uh, what's that? Um, you know, history. If you don't, it's bound to repeat itself or something. You know what has kept us um, from uh, uniting as one and uh, being, you know, raising to the next level. What has stopped that? Because really, that's what this is doing. You know, this is the divide and conquer all this stuff. You know, it's keeping us from progressing as a species. It's holding us back. We're, we're fighting over crumbs when the whole universe is available to us with Uranus and Aquarius. You know, we're fighting over... Who knows what they're fighting over. They're fighting over all kinds of stupid shit, you know? I don't know. It's how who can keep track of it anymore, you know? Who can keep track of what they're fighting over anymore? Because they're, they're, they're fighting over every darn thing. And everybody's so offended about everything. And, um, and you know, that's another thing. Sometimes this political correctness, I mean, it can go a little far. It can get a little bit too much. And by, um, it, and the, the um, supposedly the energy behind the political correctness is this Aquarian energy of, well, it's because, you know, you can't say that because, you know, um, that's not right. That that's offensive to somebody. Well, you maybe you being offensive is offensive. You know. <laughs> I mean, you being offended is offensive. Maybe you being so offended um, over everything. I think my thing is stopped. So let me take this cough drop out of my mouth. I don't want to be making sucking noises and stuff on the tape. <laughs> um, you know. If, if we really are trying to be Aquarian and we really don't want to offend anybody or hurt anybody, then don't go attacking people all the time, you know? That's, that's a form of, um, you know what I mean? I'm not expressing it clearly, but, um, you know, by attacking other people all the time, it's, if, if we really want to have an Aquarian society where everybody's equal, it's more, it would be more about forgiveness and more about, um, you know, this is attacking, this is the the Saturn, this is the disciplinarian, you know. Oh, you're wrong, point that finger, you're wrong. Hey, hey you, what did you say? Blah, blah, blah. Instead of being the kind of parent, like these are like parent, parental. Or the kind of parent that would be like, take them aside and say, you know, in a kind and loving way. That's, that is moving us closer to unity and Aquarian nature than... Uh, trying to guilt somebody or puni be punishing or make them feel bad, you know, because oops, they and, and I'm not. You know, there's some things that are pretty serious, yes, but like sometimes it's just a faux pas, you know. I have something I said something wrong, and yeah, sometimes those faux pas have deep rooted, other, you know, it's a Freudian slip actually, right? And it's 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 rooted in some real belief that they may have, but um. Whatever, whatever, um, he healing it is probably a better way to go than sh trying to shame somebody and pun oh, hey, you know, because then what are you saying? I'm I'm morally I'm morally superior to you, you know. I'm morally superior to you, and you you know, it's a put down. You know, it's a put down. I just, I'm now I'm hearing, I'm getting a lot of music. I usually don't get the music for these ones. I get them more in the tarot, but I'm hearing it's the Eminence Front. It's a put on. Yeah. That's true. And it, it in any time there's any kind of that finger pointing and stuff, it, it does stem from, you know, your own insecurities. It's a mirror and all that good stuff, but we're, I'm getting away from the chart. <laughs> so anyways, new moon and cancer, everybody. Let's, it's a change in seasons. It's a shift. It's almost a clean slate in a way, you know, it's a clean slate. Let's start anew. You know, it's a new day. You wake up, you've got a whole new day ahead of you, a whole new season ahead of you. 
let's handle it with some nurturing and love for others and for ourselves. You know, both. Cut yourself some slack because I, I, this is totally true. I noticed this, that people that are hard are very critical. They're very critical of themselves first and foremost. You know, they're pointing the finger outward, but really it's an inner... It's an inner insecurity, you know, and that's, we're all there. We're all insecure, we're all, we're all screwed up, right? <laughs> we're all screwed up, we're no, you know, we wouldn't be in earth school if we weren't screwed up, you know. We're not ascended masters, we're all working it out, we're all working on it, we're all trying to do our best, and that's all you really can do, right? Day in and day out. Okay, Cancer, call your mother. <laughs> I'm going to point the finger right now and say, call your mother. So call your mother. Call your grandmother, give them a hug, whatever it might be. Hug your kids, love yourself, hug yourself. Because that's really the best expression, the most positive expression of the Cancerian energy. Okay? All right, everybody. Hey, uh, if you want to get a chart done or anything like that, go to my website, vickyreally.com. i got all sorts of stuff, books, readings. If you're into astrology, I do these mandalas, uh, mandalas, I don't know. I was, For some reason, I'm more comfortable saying mandalas. Um... And that's what it is. It's a it's your chart. It's I take the your chart, the aspects, and then I um make it into a piece of art. It's pretty cool. And um it uh it's not um no two charts are the same, so none of none of the wheels are the same. And I also get a lot of energy from it. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. Um you know, I don't ever know what it's gonna turn out. It's a surprise to me. It's hard it's it's a lot of hard work, it takes a long time, but and I never know how it's going to turn out. But as it, there's things happening in here. These swirls, these designs and stuff, they totally, um, they'll trigger things. Like this one always reminded me of a cave painting. It was my friend Judith's mail. It was one of the very first ones I ever did. So, you know, there's things that you look in these designs. They're pretty cool. I mean, I mean, they're a little expensive, but it takes me a long time to do it. It's not something I whip out in five minutes. I mean, I'll work on it for a few days, for many hours, you know, um, but, you know, if you're into astrology, it's something to look into. And I have all sorts of other stuff, too, on my page. You know, books and tools and whatnot, and donations, all that. It all is appreciated, and it helps keep all the readings I do for free on YouTube. Uh, remember, you are love and beauty incarnate, and have a great month of... No, it's not a month. It's a great new moon in Cancer, and a great solstice. Happy solstice, uh, as I'm recording this. Okay, everybody. Till next time.